Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this quick video I want to share the difference between this mutable state of function and this mutable in state of function or mutable float state of because these functions are new in Jetpack Compose and as you can see Android Studio suggests that instead of using mutable state of zero we use mutable in state of zero but I'm always a friend of actually understanding why something is recommended. So if you are using the latest Jetpack Compose version you will notice exactly what I show you here. So mutable state off is still the normal way to create a composed state but in case of an integer here for example or in case of a float Android Studio gives us a warning. It wants us to replace this with mutable float state off or mutable int state off which I've also um, written down here. So why do we now have separate functions for all these different primitive data types? Because you'll also notice that if we store a string here in this state then suddenly the warning goes away and it's suddenly fine to leave mutable state off as it is. But as soon as we change this back to a primitive data type, we get the warning. And the underlying reason why this function changed is called autoboxing. And to understand what this really means, we need to understand how primitive data types are stored by default in Kotlin. So primitive data types are for example integers, floats, doubles and so on. In Kotlin itself, we don't really have these primitive data types because each primitive data type is still represented with its own class. So here in Kotlin we for example have this integer class which is a real class, it's not just a data type like in Java for example. But even though this is a mutable state of int, so of this class, and we just pass a number here which isn't really a class instance, so we don't use some kind of constructor here, this still works. And the reason for that is that the compiler just converts that under the hood for us. And that means that behind the scenes this value of zero is still saved inside of such an int wrapper. So this isn't really the nature of a primitive data type. A primitive data type would really just be the data type it itself. So it shouldn't have any properties, any functions for example, um, which would be the case with this int wrapper though. And what this mutable int state of now does is that it will tell the compiler to store the state as an actual primitive data type integer. So that means this zero is not stored inside such an integer wrapper, but rather stored as an integer directly. And therefore this solution prevents that under the hood this integer always needs to be converted from and to that integer wrapper. And while that doesn't change anything functionality wise, that of course has an impact on performance if we just don't need to have all these typecasts. And especially when dealing with a state like here, which can potentially change very often if we have an animation or so, then this can lead to a little performance gain. So that is why it's definitely recommended from now on to always use these mutable in state of, mutable float state of, if you actually have a primitive data type here. What's important is that this won't work for nullable values because primitive data types by default are not nullable. So if we want to pass null here, you will notice that this doesn't work because uh, null cannot be a value of a non-nullable type int. If we want to have a nullable integer however, which is possible in Kotlin, just because we have this int wrapper, then we still need to use mutable state of, make this a nullable int, oops, a nullable int, and then you will notice that uh, we also don't get any error anymore because uh, this is a totally valid state as long as we want to have a nullable primitive data type. So here we could also set the initial value to null. So I hope this cleared some of your confusion about this topic when you just saw this new function. If it did, uh, then my more advanced Android Premium courses will definitely also clear a lot of your confusion about Android development in general, especially when it comes to the skills that you need in the industry all the time. So if that sounds good to you, check the first link in this video's description to check them out. And other than that, thanks for watching this quick video and I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.